sons of men might become the sons of God, delivered as a babe, destined to be our Savior. Jesus, the man we celebrate this evening, came to die so that we might live. We welcome everyone this evening to a time of reflection on the Christmas story as told through a sampling of traditional carols. For centuries, carols have recounted the amazing story of Jesus coming to earth as a babe. Many first started as poetry, some written as far back as the 1600s and even earlier. They were not always immediately accepted by the church and often were set to multiple melodies before being published with the one we today. Like other hymns in our heritage, the lyrics often reflected conditions of the time. Authors were frustrated and saddened by wars, social inequities, and other disruptions to their lives. It seemed as though there really wasn't any peace on earth. Some of our spirituals were birthed during the years when slavery brought thousands of immigrants to America to toil on plantations. A few authors composed their lyrics out of despondency over conditions in the world or in response to how their individual church had drifted from the truth. But now, this is an evening where we all of us can reflect on what each carol means to us individually. If it ministers to you, then be blessed. If it motivates your heart and spirit to, like the shepherds and wise men, go seeking for the truth, then be on your way. Or perhaps it will bring a joyous celebration to your soul. Just as Christ came as a babe 2,000 years ago, so do these carols herald his imminent return. Would you bow your heads as we open the Christmas service? Father, we come to you tonight, much like the shepherds or the wise men. While there were no heralding trumpets to catch our attention, we felt the Spirit move among us and draw us together to celebrate in song the coming of God's Son to earth. There was no bright star in the heavens to lead us here, but your word pointed us to the truth and led us to the manger. As we listen, let our hearts be opened, our minds engaged, and our hopes rekindled by the message in the song. Thank you for sending, indeed, the greatest gift of all, and providing an opportunity for us to celebrate this evening. But thy couch 
was the Son, O thou Son of God, in the deserts of Galilee. O come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee.
Charles Wesley's most enduring Christmas hymns, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, was first written as a prayer published in 1745. It was thought that Haggai 2.7 inspired Wesley. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. Wesley had witnessed a tragedy brought on by disparity between his social classes and the lack of health care for the poor. Thousands of children ended up in orphanages, living off meager rations in an authoritarian environment. Charles Dickens, almost 100 years later, mocked the attitudes of the wealthy when stingy Ebenezer Scrooge denied giving to the poor and scolding that there were plenty of workhouses to attend to their needs. Wesley's wish in this prayer was that all this would come to an end through the advent of Jesus. Come, the long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our sins and fears release us, let us find our rest in thee. Come to earth to taste our sadness. He whose glories knew no end, by his life he brings us gladness, our Redeemer, Shepherd, Friend. Leaving riches without number, born within a cattle stall, this is the everlasting wonder Christ was born Lord of all. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king. Born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom reign. visitors. 
wondering really who is this Christ child? Or is our wonder turned to awe when we acknowledge his purpose for coming to earth as a savior? The lyrics of this carol urge us to accept Christ. Journal of Music, 
it became an immediate success. It is also said that during the Franco-Prussian War of 1871, a daring soldier jumped out of his trench and carelessly began singing the song, bringing peace to the battlefield, though, for 24 hours. Can we say today that the carols we sing during the Advent season cause us to do the same? Do we, for a brief period of time, put down our weapons of anger, jealousy, greed, hate, and call a truce in our battles? What would it take for us to then boldly walk forward and shake hands with our enemy, sharing with them the gospel of peace?
let me ask you, what were the first two songs you were likely taught as a child? Probably Jesus Loves Me and The Way in the Manger. In 1887, Arthur Murray published Dainty Songs for Little Lads and Lassies, his popular song book for children. He states that Martin Luther, who had authored this carol, had actually sung it to his children each night before bed. The song's sweet message depicts the precious moment when a Savior came to earth, bringing peace, love, and joy. From the bedroom of a single household, it has traveled around the world and become one of the most beautiful Christmas messages in song. It paints a profound and indelible image of how we should view the coming of the Christ child and accept him as a gift for our salvation. Have you ever met someone who by nature thought it was their duty to change about everything they encountered in life? Such was the demeanor of a young Isaac Watts, born in 1674, who may have inherited the trait from his father, the senior Isaac Watts. Both were strong-willed, which eventually that led to their dismissal from the Church of England. That dashed the possibility of young Watts' advancing his studies at prestigious institutions like Oxford or Cambridge, but it also opened doors for his free-thinking spirit to soar. Perhaps like many young people today, he found church music of the period to be uninspiring and monotonous. Choirs lack joy or emotion as they deliver traditional standards. Having heard enough of his complaining, the elder Watts challenged him to write something better, so he did. 600 anthems later, and labeled as a heretic, devising tools of the devil, his potential finally blossomed. It was while he was studying Psalm 98 that inspiration came to write the lyrics to Joy to the World. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing. But it wasn't until 75 years later that it landed in the hands of another forward-thinking music publisher, Lowell Mason. Finally, the carol we know as today had emerged. Like Jesus shook up, shook up Simon Peter, like Isaac Watts shook up the world of hymns, so can your individual ministry shape the world one person at a time, yes. And that is what brings great joy to the world.
the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. There's also a debate whether the translation from German misinterpreted rose, rose for rice or branch, which reinforces the fact that Christ is from the line of David. But setting aside any doubt or confusion over how the song was meant to be understood, let the image of a fragrant red rose represent Christ himself perfectly in any way. How many of you can say you rejoice in your hardships? Who of you has felt the affliction like a plantation masters lorded over the, their slaves? They were forced to work long hours in stifling heat, robbed of their personal dignity, and bought and sold as merchandise. Few that survived slavery could read or write, let alone have an education. What they knew, they had learned through oral storytelling. Fortunately, John Wesley Work made it through all the abuse and was well enough educated to begin putting the songs of slavery into publication. His work was continued through his two sons, John and Frederick, and ultimately the Fisk Jubilee Singers, who took the song to the world in the late 1800s. Think for a moment. Where would you go if you had life-changing news to declare? To the highest point, to a place where the announcement would carry far and wide, under the pain of saving slavery, having a hope of emancipation from earthly burdens kept one going forward. We have the same hope, for the weight of sin and condemnation is even greater. Therefore, let it be declared, go, tell it all the mountains, that Jesus Christ is for
tonight, the very essence of Christmas is the birth of Jesus. If you were to circle the earth and experience for yourself its vast array of cultures, you would also sample a smorgasbord of cultural interpretations of the second chapter of Luke. When a Czechoslovakian poet began reflecting on how the Magi brought extravagant gifts to the newborn king, he probably wondered, how could that be possible? In today's market, Estimates place the value of the gold, frankincense, and myrrh at between two and three million dollars. Not something an average poet could afford. Probably not something we could afford either. So, like the poet, we might ask, what can we bring? First, he wants your heart. Then, perhaps sharing your time and talent to serve others. Finally, to spread the gospel. I recently came across a quote attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. He said, preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words.
Imagine for a moment the impact a chorus of trumpeting angels soaring through the heavens would have on the world today. How could heralding trumpets not draw everyone's attention? And listen to what they're saying. Glory to the newborn king, peace on earth, God and sinners reconciled. Charles Wesley originally wrote the first line of Hark the Herald Angels to read, Hark, how the welcome rings, glory to the king of kings. Do you know what welcome is? Wesley did, and it significantly changes how you might view the soaring angels. In Old English, welcome refers to the, quote, the vault of heaven or of the sky. It's referring to the celestial abode of God himself. No, this is not some timid, angelic announcement to the shepherds only. They were taking the message to the vault of heaven, God's celestial home. I can't begin to imagine what that sounded like. There's no end to God in the universe. Yet the sounding of angelic trumpets carried the announcement to regions beyond our imagination. How great and awesome is that? Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. close. 
And anybody that wants to come, he's right there. He says, And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart that Christ is Lord, thou shalt be saved. there for us. Just thankful for the message. And we have that Savior, that beautiful story that was brought to us tonight. It is available to each one. It is near, it is close. It is, if we desire to humble ourselves and come before the Lord and desire that, it is available to each one of us. So, With that, um, maybe all of you could just bow your heads and we'll um, have a prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing of this night. And we've been given so much. And looking into this story tonight and the message that was brought forth by each one that served us tonight and their talents. And, and we brought this message and even how the inspiration of the hymns was shared with us through Dean and their desire to worship and to praise God in these hymns and and to recognize that truly we are given so much through the birth of Christ, through his living and, and um, understanding the pains and the sorrows and the different things that we go through and then to die on the cross for our, our sins. We just praise you for the gift that you've given us, that you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Go with us further on and bless all those that served us tonight and bless us as we uh, go forward. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.
nothing artificial, just truth and simplicity wrapped in swaddling clothes, destined to be the savior of all mankind, you and I included. Thank you for sharing this evening with us. You may be seated. <laughs> 